Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to find out if Palantir is really a 1 trillion company or not. I'm going to do my own valuation on the company. And as you know, if you have been following my channel, that uh, I have been a completely technical trader, very short term, and Palantir completely ruined me as an investor. I was very up on my uh, technical trading, yeah, 25% in, in like six months. And then I got my back end handed to me by the market and I decided I need to be more well-rounded. I wanna learn about long-term investing and I decided I divide up my portfolio. So I have 100,000 portfolio. I divided it into 50 and 50,000 and 50,000 is going into long-term investing and I became the responsible and conservative investor and put all this money into Palantir. So that's pretty crazy but <laughs> I have my own reasons uh, because I'm going to scale this portfolio so there is more money going to this uh, portfolio. I, I am going to buy more shares. I'm not going to be 100% in Palantir although I could totally think with this because I'm very very bullish on this company. So the point is I did my first valuation and um, it's actually very close to Tom Nash's uh, valuation, so I'm pretty sure that it's correct. And I wanted to show you and also show you what it would take for Palantir to go to 1 trillion and uh, all other good stuff. So let's go to the valuation. So here it is, guys. I did three types of valuations. Uh, one of them was based on the free cash flow. Uh, the other one was based on a projected EBIT, which would give a very true P ratio. The third one was a price to sales ratio. I couldn't do a DCF because uh, I tell you honestly, I'm just not advanced enough to do a DCF and I'm, I'm not like Tom Nash did in his calculation. He was able to count with, you know, the cost of goods, the R&D and how they increase with inflation and blah, blah. I, I'm really not that advanced. And I feel that if I could do this, I would say I'm a very good technical trader. Uh, I have a lot of experience with that. This is my first adventure into long-term investing. And I'm really happy and proud that I could do this and that it's matching Tom Nash's or very close to Tom Nash's uh, calculation. And if I could do this, I want to tell you how this is done so you can do it because I believe that Palantir is a very long term play. You have to know how to do this. Otherwise, you're going to give in to the FUD and all, you know, recession fears that are going on on the market and the Fed crashing the economy. So let's seriously dive into it. So what I used here is PE growth ratio. Basically, it means that you want to get growth at a reasonable price. And as you know, that I'm sure you know what a PE rate is. And you know that if you have a company that is growing 50% per year, they command a higher PE, the Pepsi company that is growing 5% a year, right? I heard that this datum is from Peter Lynch, who is a very legendary investor. And he said that what he likes is a PE to growth ratio of one. So how you calculate it is that you have a growth rate, which I suppose is 30%. So if then the company has a 30% a PE, then you have a 30 divided by 30, which is a one, right? But if... Um, the P would be 60 and the growth would be 30. So then you divide 60 by 30, which would be a peg ratio of two. When Peter Lynch or when this datum first started going around, it was in the 90s. It was very different uh, market environment. The interest rates were way higher. So I believe that today I actually did a little, you know, at the time of making this video, the market has been quite bad on tech stocks. You know, you have to take this with a grain of salt. I did a little compilation here of, uh, for example, Microsoft, they have a peg ratio of 1.82. Facebook, which has been devastated, has a peg ratio of 0 0.87. Google has a 1.23. Apple has a 1.9. Amazon has, also Amazon for two years has been doing nothing. Tesla has a 5.61. Jesus. Christ the valuation of Tesla the second valuation model which is also very simple which you use for unprofitable uh, companies and Palantir is a secretly profitable company we can argue on this they are only non profitable because the stock based compensation which is a non cash item is in their bookkeeping and it puts them into into minus but if you take that out they have about a 28% you know profit ratio but it's very easy even if you like there's no arguments if we start counting on on the revenue and basically compared to the revenue if you take you know a 12 multiple or what multiple you should take and there my thinking is that if you take a five multiple it's very conservative 7.5 is my neutral case and uh, 10 is my bull case here you can see my assumption and again i just did here for comparison i wrote up as of uh, yesterday the 
you know Microsoft is a 12 price to sales Facebook is five Jesus Christ Facebook is super undervalued Google is seven points is right in the middle Apple is right in the middle Amazon is my god yeah but I, I mean okay Amazon sh should not be very high because it's a, a retail business also and Tesla woohoo the valuation of Tesla so then you see that the average of these uh, companies is 7 and 1.4 so it's more like the neutral scenario is the average and also keep in mind that the market has not been very kind to tech stocks so this also depends obviously because my time horizon is five years so obviously the valuation of the company depends on you know the the circumstances at that time if there is a recession that a lot of people are talking about in the next two three years then most probably the fed is going to lower interest rates which means that in five years you know you will again have very good valuations for tech companies if the recession comes in five years then it will suck and then it will be a very bad uh, situation so and i just want to show you my assumptions so basically the 2021 free cash flow that they produced was 321 million dollars and they projected a comfortable 30 percent year over year growth so i basically just added 30 percent every year for 10 years out now the thing is many people on youtube that uh, and and many articles that i read they suspect that they will have a higher growth rate so this is a very conservative uh, growth rate for palantir although you could argue also that this is a very aggressive growth rate but i i decided to keep it and you know you can also play here you know you can change it to 40 and see what happens to the price i'm just gonna leave it at 30 for now and I also count with share dilution. And again, the share dilution has been very much. However, the CEO Alex Carr promised in the last earnings call that this is going to normalize within one to two years. So I took a, shared, a standard share dilution that for example, Apple has, um, and I just counted with that so that I count with that. So in this calculation, you know, we take how the free cash flow grows uh, and then five years from now, we're going to arrive at 1.5 billion in free cash flow that they produce. And with the dilution, it will be 2.4 million shares basically. And then depending on the different peg ratios, you're going to have a $38 price if it's my bull case and a $29 price if it's a neutral case. The peg ratio of one I feel is very unlikely, but yeah, it's I, I'm just going to say it. It's 19 point something. So my uh, cost average on uh, Palantir is 11.75. So this is a more than 3x from that point for the bullish case and a bit less than 3x for the middle case. So now if this is another calculation that is based on EBIT, so this is actual real earnings. As I said, I'm not very advanced in DCF, so I wanted to keep it very simple. And um, what I did is I, I took the revenue, I made it grow 30% every year. And I said they will have a 20% profit margin. Now here's the caveat. If you take out the stock-based compensation, the, the last year I believe their adjusted, what do you call it, gross margin or whatever they call it, was actually 28%. So it's way better than, than what I'm calculating with. So this is quite a bearish setup. And as you can see here, again, with the peg ratios, you will have a $37. It's basically the same as, as the other calculation. And also, if you wanna know the market cap, this is a 53 billion market cap with the neutral uh, in actually 20 in four years from now. If we go to the bullish uh, setup, it's a 71 billion market cap. I believe the market cap currently is 25 billion. Now I just want to show you the price to sales ratio one. Here again, 3% dilution, growth rate 30%. So here we just grow the revenue 30% every year uh, and then we multiply it by five seven point five or ten and with this method we get we come to a 31 dollar bull case a 23 dollar bear case and this is basically 100 percent for me this is 3x for me so now i'm just gonna show you very quickly what tom nash uh, came to in his calculation this is an oversimplified calculation and the thing is i read books about valuation i'm a real estate investor in sweden i am part of building hundreds of apartments in uh, south sweden and I have done a lot of uh, predictions and budgets and calculations. And I tell you one thing that you know for sure is that your budget is wrong. So the only question is by how much? Really, there's no way to do this exactly. So this is why if you are not doing these you know, evaluations for yourself, I really encourage you to start it so that you can 
have the proper mindset and and you know you can really know if you should buy a stock or not. The bear case value of Palant here today. And what I also do for my system, Justin doesn't do that. I combine it with the, with the multiple calculation and I do like an EBITDA multiple. So for a tech company, usually you put 25, but I just did 18 just to you know, fuck with the valuation. So I did like an 18 multiple on them, even though they deserve 25. And so I have 55 billion for, for multiple system and 44 billion for the DCF system. So basically as it stands now, they're a, a pretty much a $50 billion company. Okay, so you heard he says that they're $50 billion company. And I know uh, from the video that he was talking about 2026, right? So now uh, I want to answer two questions. Should you buy Palantir at this point? Uh, that's the second one I'm going to answer. And the first one is what would it take for Palantir to become a 1 trillion company? So very interesting question. So uh, obviously, if you just grow 30% into the future, at one point you are going to reach uh, 1 trillion. The question is how many years and what's your time horizon, right? And is it real that uh, there is such an addressable market available for the company? But in 10 years out with my price target, I have in a bullish case, it's a $124 stock, which is more than a 10x from where I bought it or in a neutral case, uh, $93 or $89 with the other way of calculating or 74. This is still a 7x on the investment, right? As you see here, the bull case is only $345 billion. So what would it take for Palantir to become a 1 trillion company? And, you know, we can play with the numbers uh, here a little bit. So I can let's play with this one. Let's say that they wouldn't be diluting any shares, right? How would that change the price? What we can play with is let's say that the growth rate, this is good also for the bull and the bear. So let's say that we are going to say that they will grow 40%. We're confident that they will grow 40% in the next 10 years. This is a very aggressive target. Boom, there is your trillion dollar valuation. So the people who think that Palantir is going to be a trillion dollar company in the next 10 years. So what they are assuming is a 40% growth for the next 10 years. Obviously, even with 30% growth, Palantir is going to reach it. It just takes time. Now let's see with the 20% growth. Woo! That is a bad investment if they're only growing 20%. Obviously, if they're not growing and this was your thesis, then you wouldn't want to hold on to this stock. So now another thing that is interesting. So here I am calculating with their profit margin. And as I said that their profit margin was actually 28 the last year. If you take out the stock based compensation, I mean, I don't think they were they're ever going to fully get rid of stock based compensation because it's very usual. But just for the fun of it, let's put it here. And that also puts them a trillion dollars. So I don't have the equation here. Let me move it down for you. Oh, yeah, that's right, because here I didn't mess with the with the growth and the P the peg ratio because of the peg ratio. Yeah, but Basically, with the 28 million, it's still way more valuable. It's it's about 30% valuable with a 30% higher uh, profit, right? So this is just something to play with. And then, you know, we can see, okay, if they have this high profit and they're growing 30%, what happens to them? Then they're getting close to the trillion. So I believe it would be like... 36 anyways but it, it's basically this is so interesting to do this and this is why i encourage you to do it because you can see that it's their growth rate not even the profit margin it's the growth rate that has the biggest impact on the price and the second thing is should you buy palantir at the current valuation and i have the best answer for you and that is up to you but i did a calculation how you can decide so basically if you have a 10 or a five year target i have a 10 year target right so now you like you have to ask yourself what is the percent that you are happy with as an investor and you know i want to aim for at least 30 percent in my portfolio and for 10 years and let me see what did i take as a base case here yeah so here i took the 30 percent growth three percent dilution and two peg in in 10 years and with this, if I want to achieve a year over year growth of 30%, I Palantir has to be at $9. However, if you are happy with 20% per year uh, investment, then you are good to buy Palantir even at $20. And you have to keep in mind that this is a rather safe assumption on uh, Palantir. I, I don't know. I don't know. You, you probably can't call it safe, but I guess there is upside to this, right? So I am very happy with um, this. My goal is the 30%, the 10 years, but I'm 
happy to buy Palantir up to $12, but you have to make your own decision. You can make such a table and you know, you can calculate it out for yourself what you're happy with. That was it for this video. So I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.